or some emergency happens. So um, I hope this works out well for you. Uh, you can watch this as many times as you want, and Physics B can also rewatch it if they want to. So um, I just wanted to take the time today to introduce something called electric field. Now, yesterday we worked on the homework. Um, I hope you guys finish that up by this evening where I can come and uh, take a look at it. But until then, I do want to introduce electric field. So if you remember, up until now, we've only been talking about point charges, okay? We've been saying that there's one source or point charge that has a Q in coulombs, and it's somewhere in space, it has a mass, things like that. However, we want to be aware that there is actually also an electric field around these, char uh, these charges, um, even in space, okay? So now we don't care about just the charges themselves, but even all around space, and I wish I had my blackboard here, or a chalkboard, but um, try to imagine that there are field lines going all between these uh, two charge points here. Now that makes sense because every time we draw a proton or electron or any other type of uh, positive or negative charge, um, every time we throw a particle into that space, it will move. It'll be either attracted to the positive charge or negative charge, or it will be pushed away by the positive or negative charge. And that happens because of a field that's actually in between these charges, okay? So that's a big vocab word here is electric field, okay? And it's actually very similar to what we've been talking about so far. So you'll see in the equations later. Um, in addition to that, every time we have a positive and a positive charge, you will see that we have a radius in between them and it will be pushed away. But if our test charge, Q0, is our test charge, uh, something very, very small, okay, just to see what will happen, it will move towards the negative charge um, if it is positive, okay? And this is a pattern I hope we really understand here, especially with the homework that's due tonight. So just keep in mind that our test charge is always much, much smaller than the source charge because it should not produce its own electric field. Electric field is only produced by large source charges, ideally, okay? So if you wanna see a visual of what this looks like, uh, again, I show this to Physics B, but magnets are a pretty good example, okay? Uh, one of these is a positive, one of them is a negative, and when you put the special metal, actually here it's iron, you will see that it forms a pattern, a pattern that is very closely related to what an electric field looks like. And you could look in your textbooks as well. There's plenty of examples. Um, a typical uh, electric field will look something like this. There's actually often many different electric charges in space, and they will each contribute to forming an electric field around it. <coughs> Let me see if I can draw something here. This is different from the... Uh, Chinese one we have in the room, okay? So this one here, as you can probably guess, and this one here, there are point charges here, small charges, uh, at both of these points, which create these electric field lines. Which means, basically, if we put a small test charge here, these arrows are showing us that this charge will move in this direction with that magnitude as well. Um, here as well, they have, you know, actually all the magnitudes here look quite the same. So all the directions are changing, uh, magnitudes remain the same. Just for your future reference, uh, scientists have, have identified whenever the arrows are coming out of a point charge, that point charge is ne uh, positive. And a negative point charge will always have the electric field lines, E, okay, I'll have that in the next screen. E will always be pointing towards the negative. It goes from positive to negative. Uh, for those of you that took electricity already in the past, uh, this can be quite familiar for you. Um, so of course we have an equation related to this. 
Um, we call this the electric field E. There's a little arrow here to show that it's a vector. Okay, and it's made by a big charge Q. Okay, this Q can be a, you know, a sphere somewhere, but it could also even be like a wall, or it could even be a plate of some sort. So it can really come from anywhere, as long as, you know, we usually think of it as very big, okay? Um, and these electric field lines will change depending on the force at that point and also how strong that test charge is. So if we have a very strong test charge, a big, uh, I show this to physics be like a plus plus Q, okay, big positive Q versus maybe a smaller positive Q, okay, that's going to affect the electric field that it feels at that point, okay? So the larger test charge will actually be affected less by the electric field than a smaller test charge, okay? Now let's see what happens when we compare positives and negatives. Uh, this point A here is being attracted to the negative, as I showed you in the previous slide. And if you put another point here, same, same type of point, uh, next to a positive source, or a large Q, right? A test charge, okay? Now this will change its magnitude depending on how close we go. So these arrows that you see here on the outside, the white ones, are only showing you the direction. Now, if we throw in a test charge, we can call this like a Q0, or just a sensor, really, that will detect how strong the electric field is. Uh, you will see that the magnitude will change depending on how close we put it to our source charge, big Q, okay? Now, as you can see, it's exponential. Wow. See how quickly it becomes long. Here, it's practically impossible to see any electric field. But you get closer and closer, and it increases at a faster, faster rate, because if you look at the equation, it's all over r squared. Okay, this red line is the distance. This is r squared. That's why it changes so much, even when we move it only a little bit. Okay, now what happens when we throw in a negative charge here? Okay, as we said, Negative charges will always take in the electric field lines. Electric field lines always point towards a negative charge. They'll go out of the positive and into the negative. Okay? You can throw in as many of these as we want. Okay? And as you can see, it'll follow the algorithm of the pro 